which is taking place in Manchester today and um, I have with me Emily who is from um, a design group based in Manchester. So Emily would you like to say which organisation you're representing? Yeah, um, I'm from a group called Manchester Women's Design Group or MWDG for short. Um, um, we were set up about three or four years ago and it was from a sister group in London which has sadly lost its funding this year so we're kind of going it alone as a volunteer tree group, we're one of those big society, you know, do it for free kind of groups, and um, we meet every month on the last Thursday of every month and we talk about uh, different design issues that are going on in Manchester, it could be from um, consulting about uh, St Peter's Square Design, which is a, a public space, um, or um, commenting on a consultation for a specific building. Design is um, close to my heart. I've been following it for about two years now. Um, when I noticed Elizabeth House had hoardings around it, and some of you might um, have started realising it's being knocked down at the moment, um, it went out to international design uh, competition that was run by the city council two years ago, and they had lots of design entries. Um, I put one in. Unfortunately, I wasn't successful, which is a shame. But I was only a student at the time, and. Uh, so they had six designs that they wanted to um, put out to public consultation, but this was put on hold and we didn't hear anything for a while. And then the next we heard was the Metrolink was going to be moved. So there's a metro station in the square and um, the position of it is going to change. And the Cenotaph, uh, which uh, is quite a controversial decision, is going to be moved to outside the main town hall um, in St Peter's Square where the Peace Gardens used to be. Um, and this is kind of set in stone bits, but then there's going to be another international competition to get the whole design of the square to come together, and that's kind of what we want to input on at the moment. Now you mentioned that you're really passionate about this, can you tell us where that passion stems from? <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, um, I guess um, it comes from when I went to university, I studied architecture and um, I went back to do, it's called a B Arch, it's kind of like a master's and it takes two years and I joined um, a unit called MSAP, um, Manchester School of Architecture Projects and we always start projects with people so we always consult and we always ask and we always engage um, and so my project that year was St Peter's Square so <laughs> I learned a lot about it very quickly and I also talked to about 100 people about the project so I asked them to fill in postcards and I got them to make models um, and I got them, I kind of empowered those people to, uh, to have a voice about that space because I think public space is the only democratic space we have and I think it's really important. Yeah. <laughs> And you said something very interesting about people having a voice about the space. How do you enable people to have a voice about the space? It's like the million dollar question, I like it. Um, it's very difficult and I've studied very hard on it and my job is now to do that. How, how do you engage people and how do you empower them? Um, there are lots of different techniques and there are lots of different methods, but I think deep down it has to come from the willingness of the designers to involve people um, and it has to come from the it's not so much giving control over to them, so it's not giving them a blank bit of paper and saying, what would you like? Here you go. Um, I designed models, so I, I designed a model that was of all the existing buildings and, and all the existing um, roads and tram lines. And I said, what would you like? But here are the tools. And that gave them a real input. input. And for the people that I then sent them to in the town hall, they could understand what they really wanted, rather than a childlike drawing which doesn't empower anybody. I wanted to give them a real, you know, a real input into that. So what's your vision for St Peter's Square? Okay, well, um, it's a bit difficult because uh, my, my tutor always says that my vision for St Peter's Square was rubbish, but it was because I was kind of proving a more of an academic point rather than um, providing a realistic vision for St Peter's Square. Um, my vision took about 100 comments that I got from people and I used every comment to uh, draw something on the square that they wanted and then I overlaid all of those different comments so this drawing was a 
a bit of a mess by the time I'd finished with it. Um, but I then took parts of it and every part was kind of overlaid. Everything had to be shared, so I was making more of a, an academic point that about public space rather than a realistic uh, vision. But now, because I'm now a professional designer and I have a job, I, I want to make a really good effort to make a design that's actually viable. <laughs>